So the what we found um, when we've been working with all of these teachers across the country is that um, a lot of STEAM teachers, when we when we first designed this, we were thinking, oh, this is specifically for math teachers um, or in math classrooms when it's at the lower grades. But we found that about um, a big chunk of our teachers are STEAM teachers um, who really need the curriculum when they go into their unless they want to design it all themselves, which is perfectly great. Um, but sometimes you also want to use things that other people have used. Uh, so there's a there's a fairly low cost um, to working with the impact activities. Uh, a lot of materials are being upcycled to use them. A lot of materials that you can sort of find around, around your house or around town. Uh, cardboard, for example, is a really good one. Um, the 3D printing has really come down in price. Um, the printers that we've sent around the country are now you know, closer to 200 than 300. Um, and so it becomes a very cost effective. There's tons of school libraries, lots of public libraries now have um, 3D printers that are available that the teachers can have access to. Um, so it's really become really, really um, much more reasonable for, for teachers to get involved with 3D printing. And um, you know, you're incorporating a lot of processes, STEM processes, and uh, let alone art, um, and it really allows for a lot of creativity. Um, and similarly, like for the for the math teachers, um, these are all grade-based standards that that the um, activities are incorporating. They um, there is the progression along the along the way. And um, I don't know that any, well, the folks here, 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 some of you may care about research results, um, but we had really good research results. If, if you've followed any amount of educational research, uh, generally you don't find um, any significant changes um, because it's really hard. And um, we had significant results um, where the kids were gaining about a grade level on uh, pre-post assessments of math and spatial reasoning uh, that were not designed by us. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of important. Like, of course, if we design the assessment, of course we can find some gains. Um, but we were not the ones to design it. It's the same mathematical concepts and same spatial reasoning concepts, but we didn't say like, oh, on page three, what is the animal? You know, that kind of assessment. Um, at least maybe we can go to the next one. And it's important that it wasn't just overall growth. We found um, growth among all the subpopulations that um, that we looked across, right? So uh, boys and girls, um, lots of different ethnicities. I, I don't know how clear the slides are to you. Um, really important, right, is um, for English uh, first and then English as second or third languages. Um, we really had a big concentration on helping uh, or help supporting teachers that are in rural areas. So about half of the schools that participated in the in the project were from rural areas. Um, and so we saw gains across across everyone, which is really, really heartening. And can you share, I think the dotted line on the graph is a letter, grade letter increase. Yeah, so letter that's a- increase. Yeah. Whatever, a 10% type of type of game. 